ฮากบานักเลงสอร์การเปดงกะลามังยะกะซองพิซากะบาชิพฮอคลอร์กะเวยกะเซนเตอร์ส์ออฟเอ็กซเซลเลนต์ฮาปอกรีอินเดียบร
this collaboration will go a long way in ensuring that we are able to help and enhance the productivity and the overall earnings of all of our farmers in our state. So that is really the main objective and uh, we are very hopeful that uh, this project will materialize very very soon, it is at final stage, as I said we need a final approval from Government of India and we are in touch with them and we are hopeful that this will materialize uh, very soon and uh, this partnership that we are having with Israel will be a game changer, I should say, for the people of our state and especially for our farmers. I once again thank our ambassador uh, who has uh, made his time and come to our state to really take interest in this and it reflects his commitment uh, to the state and to the region of the Northeast. Uh, I thank his entire team for taking the efforts of coming here and I really look forward to this, uh, to these two centers of excellence is coming up at the earliest in our state of Meghalaya. Good afternoon. I'd like first to thank Mr. Meghalaya and his staff for the warm welcome and hospitality. Thank you so much. And I'm very pleased to come to this lovely state. And today is a really special milestone when the state of Meghalaya is becoming part of the family of the states that are part of the Indo-Israeli Agriculture Project, which is a very successful project. We have now in this project uh, 29 functioning centers of excellence all over India. In these centers, we bring our latest technologies, practices, advanced systems that we use for advanced agriculture and water management. So now we just discussed a very constructive discussion and we are starting the process, of course, with the participants and the cooperation of the government, the federal government of India. And we start uh, initiating centers of excellence here in Meghalaya. And uh, we are going to bring the best experts from Israel with the latest technologies and to build a tailor-made uh, program for advancing and uh, sharing our practices and experience with the farmers of Magalai. The potential here is huge. And what we are trying to do is to see how we can work together on all the value chain and bring added value and shape the competitive advantage of the local farmer in order to make him more profitable which is aligned with the, the vision of Prime Minister Modi of doubling the incomes from here in India, which they so much deserve. This will also bring future and hope for the young generation, the precious young generation, which is so promising because with, after uh, implementing and adapting advanced technologies, the esteem of farmers will be much higher as it should be. I can share with you that there are farmers in Israel that are very proud to be engineers and scientists. Since we use very advanced technologies, high-tech technology that we use for farming and agriculture. And this is what we want to share here. The relations between Israel and India has been growing rapidly and steadily in the last years. Very advanced in all sectors of life. So agriculture is one of the main pillars. Agriculture is the backbone of the Indian economy. And as uh, Honorable Chief Minister just mentioned, Israel is leader in agriculture and water management in the world. So as friends, with strong friendship, a friendship that is built on mutual trust and mutual respect, we want to share all our achievements, all our developments, also the mistakes that we did with our precious friends here in India in order to just to support each other because that's what friends do. This is our values of friendship. And I'm so happy that the state of Megalaya, the lovely state of Megalaya, is becoming part of this collaboration. And this is also only the beginning, since as the Honorable Chief Minister just mentioned, Israel is going to be more present, to increase its presence in the Northeast 
and to bring more and more experts, more and more technology, and to share, to collaborate more and more with the Northeast, uh, with just nominated an honorary consul of Israel, based in Assam, to represent us in this very valuable and important place, and part of India, crucial part of India. So we are going to address, as I said, other sectors in technology, even tourism, culture, we want to see more ties, more bonds, and hopefully in the future also direct flights from Tel Aviv uh, to the Northeast. We want to see much more presence of Israelis in this very lovely area of India. These are, uh, basically, these are uh, centers of excellence that are funded uh, from Government of India. Uh, Government of India has a rough estimate of about 10 crores per uh, center of excellence. And uh, as I said, we are in advanced uh, discussion and this discussion and dialogue today is part of that entire process to take this entire uh, project forward. And uh, we're very hopeful that, uh, uh, that this will be sanctioned at the earliest. So uh, these are, as I said, uh, uh, two of the centers of excellence we're planning here, 10 crores each. Talking about working on all the value chain, we realize that what we understand now that if we want really to double the income of the farmers, we need to work on and to overview all the value chain from the farmer to the end uh, uh, consumer. So it includes also post harvesting, marketing, and really coming to the market with a competitive advantage. So we are going to do all of this, and this will eventually bring a the objective, and we also always focus on this objective, increasing the income of the farmers. This is the objective, and for that we are going to work on all the chain until the consumer. What we will do in order to utilize and to maximize the potential and to bring it to optimization, we need to build something that is tailor-made. So we are going to overview and to analyze the uh, conditions that are there with every farmer, what is his challenges, what is relative advantage, and to work on that. And if it demands new crops, so it will be new crops. If it will just the advance of uh, uh, current crops, that's what we'll do. So it will be tailor made. This is the best way to bring to optimizations uh, under, the, under the constraints that are there. There are many constraints, but once we realize the relative advantage working with the farmer and adjusting the solution and the model for his conditions, they remain this what will bring the profit and the objective that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. I just I just add to what uh, our ambassador has mentioned. Uh, the objective is really to use technology to help the farmers. There is no uh, free solution that this is what they will do and this is what will happen. It's not like that. What they want to do is help the farmer at the end uh, and use technology to, uh, you know, to increase the overall output or the quality uh, of food processing and post-harvest management. Uh, so it is a range of areas and whatever system and technology suits and is required by the farmer, according to that, the needs will be done. But obviously, there will be a lot of stress on our local indigenous foods. Uh, we as a government are very keen to ensure that the, the uniqueness of the produce that we have, which may not be available in other parts of the world, could be of high value uh, somewhere in the world. So really, so that's, so it's really an open-ended question, but we will do what is in the best interest of the farmer. The latest technology that we use, we call precision agriculture. We use now drones and satellite images to give us the precise uh, uh, view of the field. So we can really analyze by the accuracy of pixels what is the situation in every field and to analyze and calculate exactly the amount of water, fertilizers, nutrition that we need in order to utilize and to get the best that we can get from every uh, land and every farm. And this is what we do. This is technologies that are taken from the uh, defense sector, from space uh, technology sectors, and are implemented in agriculture uh, equipment uh, in order to utilize and to make the maximum that we can do 
with uh, the conditions that we have. Well, just to just to add to that, um, you see, technology uh, is as good as we use it, or is as good as it is applicable to us. Israel has been a leader uh, in terms of technology intervention in every field and in agriculture too. So therefore, there are a lot of technologies that will be there. They will have to study and see which one suits us, and then adjust it accordingly. Now, for example, uh, there is a, a technology that uh, they have used, which is a combination of drip irrigation and something they call fertigation. Fertigation. So this ensures that the ingredients, the different kind of uh, nutrients that are required, is put in the root where it matters. Now, because it rains a lot in Meghalaya, the the soil gets washed away every time it rains. So the nutrients that are there in the soil could actually also get washed away. So therefore, maybe that could lead to the crop productivity going down. Now, can fertigation help us? So there is definitely scope. But if we were able to do that, then we will ensure that the nutrients required by the plant to increase the productivity can be done through this technology and hence lead to the productivity increase. So therefore, there is no one solution as we mentioned. There are many such technologies available. So we will see how it goes and um, adjust and see what technology is going to help us the most. There are conditions, there are challenges, and then we learn what they need and then we will see how we can implement and adjust the technologies that we already use. And in we will find very useful uh, and, and to adjust them to the needs of the farmers here, to be their own aim. So we are, we are coming with the approach of what we call dual use and multi use of technologies. Technologies can be adjusted to any challenges. It's a very flexible approach and open minded and broad minded uh, thinking. So this is what we are doing understanding the challenge, sometimes it's a unique challenge, and harnessing technology to bring solution to this exact challenge as it is. That's what we're trying to do, to listen, to understand, to adhere, to really internalize what is the challenge and then to bring a, a, a solution that is dedicated and tailor-made to this challenge. We came with delegation of experts uh, from Israel to work and discuss and start a new way of developments. So we came to talk about agriculture, developments of centers of excellence and other uh, development uh, challenges that uh, we can share all together with uh, Nagaraya. So this is what we are focusing today. As I said, it should be tailor-made. Mostly we, we prefer organic uh, uh, agriculture, but it's not a necessity. Again, we have the objectives, we have some constraints. One of them is being organic or not organic, but eventually we want to uh, uh, maximize the potential that is here and bring tailor-made solutions that will enable us to do so, to increase the income of the farmers, to use and implement advanced technologies uh, to make the farmers in much higher esteem using high-tech high in their uh, farming. Thank you.